So I think there are, there are five futures for the internet and the web and how they're going to affect society. Um, the first is that the web isn't very important, uh, that it's simply a tool, that it largely allows us to do things that we've already done but just in a slightly different way that might am amplify them or speed them up. But it's fundamentally just a tool. And you used to hear that view uh, most loudly, I suppose, in the wake of the dot-com crash uh, at the start of this decade. There's nothing really new in this stuff. Most of the business models aren't new. Um, eBay is just a kind of flea market taken onto the internet. Um, so actually, this is all kind of overrated. I think that view is probably wrong, and m very few people now hold it. There is a, a second view, which is a more, much more sophisticated version of that, which is um, the web might be really big, but it won't be really big for quite a long time, and we overestimate how quickly change will happen. So we tend to um, underest uh, overestimate uh, in the short term and underestimate in the long term. Most technological change takes 50 or 60 years to have a real impact and that's because it takes a long time for technologies to become embedded in organizations, ways of life, consumption, habits. And so the big impacts of the phone or uh, the telegraph or the television even came long after they were invented. And this is true of many technologies. The disposable diaper was invented 40 years before it became a mass consumer product because Procter & Gamble uh, were the people who didn't invent the diaper, they understood how you could turn it into a mass product. Um, the fax machine was, uh, the basic technology was around 60 years before it became a product. The technology at the heart of the iPod has been around for 100 years. So we tend to think that technological change happens very quickly Actually, the truth is, it takes a long time often. So this might be true of the internet, and one version of this is a very good book about technology, um, written by someone who I disagree with quite a lot of the time, um, called The Shock of the Old. Um, and in it, um, The Shock of the Old is all about how actually new technologies are really old technologies. Now, there, it's an interesting thought then what that might mean because it's sort of comforting which is actually the big impact of the web might be some way off then we might have more time to prepare but what it means is that if this is the first 10 years of the mass adaptation of the web then the destruction of the music industry the rise of google the rise of youtube the collapse of business models across publishing and software that's the first 10 years so if that view is right and it may well be right we've got 50 more years of even more fundamental change to come. So there's a third view, which is, yeah, the web is big. The web and the net is big. Um, it's big and it's going to be very, very bad. Uh, it's going to be dreadful. And it's going to be dreadful because it's going to destroy all sorts of established ways of doing business, making decisions, getting things done, fundamentally knowing where the truth is and it won't create anything of real value in its place and so this is the view of um, in a sort of polemical form um, Andrew Keane in The Cult of the Amateur uh, a book about the web and its impact on culture and a guy called Nicholas Carr in a much better book called uh, The Big Switch and Carr is a kind of intelligent version of Andrew Keane in a kind of much more sophisticated and thoughtful way. That actually, this is all going to unwind things that we value, and it's going to sound amazing, but it's going to end up in complete chaos. Um, in Keane's metaphor, it will be monkeys typing encyclopedias. Um, and so this is an attack on the idea that Wikipedia is going to become the mainstream way of creating and assessing knowledge rather than using academics and experts and professionals. That instead of finely crafted programs on the BBC, we'll have crap videos on YouTube. Instead of uh, Anthony Lane writing brilliant film reviews in The New Yorker, we'll be left with a host of completely useless blogs. Um, I think this view is completely wrong. Um, I think it rests on an incredibly rosy account of what we had in the past. 
Um, and it underestimates the creativity that can be unleashed by the web and the new ways it can create really powerful things creatively which can be really of considerable quality, albeit not the same as things that they might challenge and replace. So the third view is the web is big and the web is going to be bad. The fourth is the web is going to be big, is already big and it's probably, possibly, has the potential to be really important and that's my view.